Well, good evening, gang, and welcome to It's All About Arts. My name is Glenn Williams. I'm your host, and to my left and to your right, of course, is the lovely Carol O'Connor. Hi, Carol. How Hi, are you? Good. How are you? Great. Great. We're coming to you live from beautiful Eggleston Square in our brand new uh, studios here, the BNN Studios, right here at 3025 Washington Street, the new site of the BNN Studios. Mm -hmm. And you can call in and join us if you'd like. We're at 617, new number, 617-708. 3290. So if you want to join us, the great staff of being in there in the other room answering the phones, and uh, you can join us if you'd like. Hi, Cal. Hi, Glenn. What's happening? Nothing. How uh, was your you weekend? Show, show people your bunny. It's my bunny. You like my bunny? You know why that bunny's there? Because I lost the button. No, one's, no one can sew it. No one can sew it. You can't sew. You know, I, always, I used to be able to sew, but then I, you know, I stick my fingers, like yeah. you can't get it through the thing. Not good. I'm not a very domestic dude. <laughs> I'm really not, you know? Yes, we know that. <laughs> JW takes care yeah, of you. The, fact, the <laughs> super producer, Janice Williams. Yes. You know what I want to do, though? I do want to take a couple of seconds out to thank some of the people that keep us on the air. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, and first and foremost, of course, is the, is the uh, Main Streets program. We really appreciate everything that they do for us. If you don't know what the Boston Main Streets program is, what they do is they have 22 different business communities around the city of Boston, and what they do is they help revitalize those areas. There's one in West Roxbury, there's mm -hmm. one in Chinatown, uh, South Boston, Rosendale in our community, mm -hmm. and what they do is they do a couple of different things. One of the things that they do is they help revitalize the business district as far as the storefront improvement goes. So uh, they so oftentimes, uh, the one that I have experience with has some great designers, people that are architects and designers that are on the committee that help um, business owners put up a new facade or new signage or something, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And one of the other committees that they have is economic restructuring. Let's say you own a building and you want to put a business in it, in the business district. What they do is they do surveys of the neighborhood, they do demographic work, they find out what kind of businesses people want so that you, as a property owner, will have all the information That's you need idea. to put a good business mm -hmm. in. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I'm involved in is the promotions committee. That's and fun. Yes, that's a great committee. And what we do is we um, bring people down into the community to, to enjoy their business district. We try and get, get things available for people in the community so mm -hmm. that they'll see what's going on. Some family uh, and entertainment, some family fun. We just had the, the holiday tree lighting in Rosendale mm -hmm. Square. It was so, so, it was great. Uh, the, the great mayor of the city of Boston, Tom Menino, was down, mm -hmm. and we threw the switch and turned on the holiday lights. So those are some of the things that the Main Street program does. I mean, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're around your neighborhood or your business district and you see a Main Street event going on, go over and thank those cats, because they're all volunteers. They no, one, no one's getting paid to do that, so we really right. appreciate the work that they do. Mm -hmm. You got an opportunity to work with some of them for a while there with that Taste of Roslindale. Yep. That was successful. Yeah, did you, find, did you find working with the Main Streets program, was it beneficial to say have a good, oh, some good information yep. for you and stuff? Yep, very good information, contacts, um, you know, quick, you know, avenue to go to to get questions answered instead of me doing all the research. Yeah, Because yeah. they know the community and the businesses right, very right. well. Yeah, yeah they, they're, they're a good bunch and they've been around for a long time. The one in Rosendale's been there since 85. Right, that's right, it's the oldest one, The correct? oldest one, the oldest urban Main Street mm -hmm. in the country. Right. Yikes. Yes. So uh, we're very, very proud of, of what some yeah. of the stuff they're doing. There. Kelly Tienan up in West Roxbury is doing a great yeah, job. Yes, yeah. uh, they have uh, They have some great restaurants and eateries there mm -hmm. as well. Yep. In fact, we've got one of the great chefs from, from up there on the program yep. tonight, have, don't we? You have Max Peterson. Max He's Peterson. the executive chef. Great. Of West Center. He was involved in the West, I mean West. He was involved in the Taste of Rosendale yeah. as well. So he'll be on showing us some delicious right. dishes that they serve. Let's talk, let's talk about one of the things that, that you do. You're, you're, you're a critic. Yes, I have my website. You criticize me all the time. Right. <laughs> food, fashion, and fitness. <laughs> the three apps of life. Now, where do I fall into <laughs> food, fashion, and fitness? In what manner? In which category do I fall into? Because I look, you know, fashion-wise. You, like, you don't like my sweater, do you? Fashion for pop. <laughs> I love my sweater. <laughs> Come on. Well, tell me a little bit about Table, table, crit okay. table Critic. So two years ago in October, fall of October, 
I wanted to review restaurants. So I applied online to do an online thing and, you know, never heard back. So a friend of mine said, why don't you just do it yourself? I said, what do you mean do it myself? He's like, I'll create your website and then from there, you know, cold call or email or present yourself to these restaurants and work from there. And then that's what I've been doing is calling the restaurants and telling them, you know, th I'm table critic, this is what we do for you. Um, at, eventually, after we, I reviewed a bunch of restaurants, I got writers to also write for me. So I have four writers now who write is, is for the, me. Is the, is, the, is the goal to help the restaurant or to help me find a good place to go to eat? Both. both. It's both. Yeah, we're not critics in the sense that, you know, we're going to go in there and give you a bad review. It's all about enlightening the readers the diners about your restaurant and at the same time featuring you in a good light, showing mm -hmm. all the good points well, of going good... out to eat when it comes to atmosphere, the decor, you know, decor, the food, the service. Yeah. And then below we give like a little assessment and then we give a rating between one and five forks, yeah. five being the best. Because <laughs> I'm sure some of the restaurants they hear critic, you know, right. that, you know, like poor Max, he probably hears you're in the, in the, in the, in the <laughs> restaurant. You know, it starts cringing out yeah. there, peeking out to see. Yeah, it's, it's all, it's just telling, it's just, it's basically in a way promoting restaurants to yeah. be on this website. And what's unique about our website is we take photos of everything, ah. but then they stay on the website. So it's not like you're going to be featured for one week in the newspaper. So there's a away. reference there too, so I can reference. I can, is there a little search? I can go and say uh, West on Center or something? Uh, eventually oh, there will be, nice. but we have, a, um, it's a scroll. We have like past reviews. So it gives you all the information about the restaurants, um, mm -hmm. whether they take re reservations, the times, um, type of pave payment, website. So even though you're looking at a review from a year or two ago, you can, and the menu might be different, you can click on their website. You know, that, pay, that, that way of payment is very important because cause I, I know mm -hmm. that there are some restaurants, one of the best and oldest restaurants in the city, Doyle's Cafe. Cash only, pal. Still? Still. No credit cards. Yeah. You know who's like that? It's Giacomo's in the South End and really? the North End. Just cash. And that happened to a friend and I. We were there ordering. I'm like, I'm like, they don't take credit. And we're just, you know, everyone's just credit card, credit card. So I'm there. I'm like, oh, my God. So I, I run into the car and I'm scrounging up pennies and dimes, anything, <laughs> to the point where, like, all right, he had to leave. And you say, well, do you I stayed there. <laughs> yeah, I just stayed. I'm like, I'll have another drink, please. <laughs> Well, this, you know, who else we have on the show tonight is we have Jesse, Jesse, Jessica is here from the Fuller Museum, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the Fuller Museum is one of Janice's and my favorite, favorite places. Not only is the museum beautiful, but, but the grounds around it. Oh, they beautiful. They call it a campus. It's right on a beautiful lake. Oh, you, you, you've got to go. Yeah. It's crafts. It's everything. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. We're going to learn more about that Good. tonight, Good. Yeah, too. it'll be fun. You know? Yeah. We're not going to be back on the air until after the new year. Right, January 7th. I hope this place can handle it without us. I think so. You know, that's what happens yeah. when you have a show on Monday. You get hit all the holidays. You get hit with all the holidays, or, but we're getting vacations. whacked really good this year because <laughs> Christmas and New Year's fall on a Tuesday. Yep. And there are two the shows, yeah. Mondays and Tuesdays. Yeah. And on January 7th, we'll have Bangkok Cafe on with Thai food. So that'd be, that'd be a nice aroma. It's going to be fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, that Bangkok Cafe is, is a great, great place, right? In yeah. Rosendale. So what are you doing for the holidays? I want everyone to know what, what, you, um, what your plans are. I'm not... Carol O'Connor. I don't know. Well, I'm going to the Pops Sunday night, the holiday Pops. You'll love it. Have you been? I, oh, yeah. I, I try to Isn't go every it year. It's the best. Yeah. You get so happy and everyone's happy. Um, before that, I'm going to go to Brasier Joe's for dinner. Um, right, first, are you sitting on the floor? No, I'm gonna, I, I have sat on the floor. I do like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, no, I'm going to sit in the, um, this balcony. For, symphony, yeah. for, guys, for people who haven't been, you sit on the floor, there's a nice little table. It's like half the size of, of this. Yeah, right. It's small and all your food and wine are there. And you're listening to the music and Santa Claus comes down. But oh, it's, it's a real so, event because yeah. you're in that, that atmosphere. Yeah. And, and it's just, a, first of all, it's a nice room. It is. <laughs> you know, yeah. Symphony Hall is a nice place. Yep, it is. So, uh, so then you're going to dinner before that. Where are you going, Jack? What would you say? No, <laughs> Jack. Brassia Joe's. It's a French restaurant on Huntington Ave. It's in the Colonnade Hotel. It's been there for years. You must like to go out to eat. I love going out to eat. That's why I exercise a lot. Because if a, not, you'll look like me. Things will suck on that. Well, you, you, should have, you should do the three F's. Food, fitness, and fashion. Follow those rules, you'll be all set. The three F's of life. Seriously, now what is wrong with my sweater and my shirt? You wouldn't let me wear the green tie. 
Yellow. It was it yellow? It, it used to look like an Easter egg. <laughs> like <laughs> for April, you can wear it. All right, all right. It's fine. We all love. We still love you, Glenn. Thank you very much. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> okay, gang. Listen, thank you very much for being here. We've got to get to the show because we'll just go on forever. We're going to have Max on it. Interview him. Yeah, well, you got some beautiful, got great food in the studio. Uh, yep. Like a boy. Listen, gang, hang in there. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with our first guest, Max. Okay? Don't go away. Thanks. Stormy weather. Just can't get my poor self together. I'm weary all the time. The time. So weary all the time. When he went away. Blues walked in and met me. If he stays away, old rocking chair will get me. All I do is pray the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more. Can't go on. Everything I had is gone Stormy weather Since my man and I ain't together Keeps raining all the time Keeps raining all the time and met me If he stays away Old rocking chair will get me All I do is pray The Lord above will let me Walk in the sun once more Can't go Everything I had is gone Stormy weather Since my man and I Ain't together Keeps raining All the time Keeps raining Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Carol O'Connor and to my left and your right, correct? Very nice. Yeah, I know my directions here. <laughs> I have Max Peterson from West On Center, which is located on Center Street in West Roxbury. Hey Max, welcome to the studio. Nice to meet you again. Yeah. Hey Max, welcome. Good to see you again. Yes, good to see you again. So Max, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm originally from Fall River, I'm mm -hmm. a Massachusetts native. Um, I um, went to college at UMass Amherst. Mm -hmm. um, actually. I studied um, fine arts. Um, oh, you did? Yeah. Interesting. And, and um, food was, has been in my family for years. Mm -hmm. um, my mother was a caterer. Uh, my brother w went into restaurant hotel management. So uh, I got out of college. I didn't have a job. So I went back into restaurants, which I started out washing dishes at yeah. when I was younger. Um, and um, proceeded to just learn everything. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for different chefs every year, um, especially actually when I was younger. I had a great opportunity to work with a master chef. Um, and then I decided to move out to Seattle for uh, three years. Yeah. I moved to Seattle. Um, I met up with uh, my chef. His name is uh, Nick Musser. He works. Mm -hmm. He's the chef at the Icon Grill out there. 
and um, he took me under his wing and taught me pretty much everything that I know. Um, and then he uh, had enough confidence in me to open up a restaurant in California. And um, I was down in California, Livermore, California, for about two years. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to come back to uh, Boston, where I met up with uh, the Eat, 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 Eat laugh, laugh, and Drink, and drink Group. group. Yep, yeah. yep. I'm and, um, familiar with them. I met uh, Joe, Joe Green and mm -hmm. his wife, and um, they needed a chef, so I, I went into West Island Center. Excellent. And I've been there for... Almost, Almost two, two years. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah, because yeah, you changed the menu a lot. Yeah, and brought in a lot of um, different unique dishes that we're mm. going to um, show our viewers once we um, go to our break and come back. Right. Um, as an exec no, as an executive chef, do you, do you do you have to cover all of the all of do you have other chefs underneath you that, that take care of mm -hmm. like you know uh, the the soups and someone takes care of the desserts and someone takes care or are you getting your hands involved in everything? Oh um, yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah, the daily runnings of the whole. Uh, back of the house, we call it, mm -hmm. um, ordering, h hiring, firing, you mm -hmm. know, just taking care of everything. I, d I did have a sous chef. I'm actually looking for one right now. Are you really? He's like, interested. <laughs> uh, um, he actually went on to one of the, one of the other restaurants that, that uh, Joe and Eleanor own, down oh. on Paramount. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. And, um, on Charles Street in um, Beacon Hill yep. area. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. Um, but now, yeah, everything. I, I have about 13 guys that work underneath me, uh -huh. and you know, they, from dishwashers to prep cooks right. to line cooks. So. Now, when you, you were talking about when you were out in Seattle, that you got, you got a great opportunity from another executive chef that, yeah. that, that, that helped you, you know, through the business and through the education of it. Is that where all of your education in, in the chef business comes from, is, is hands-on experience? or was Yes, there some, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Uh, my mom, like I said, she was a caterer, so I used to wake up and make hors d'oeuvres in yeah. the morning. <laughs> sure. uh, it was free labor for her. And um, just, I got a job when I was 14 washing dishes and then just right. kind of kept doing it. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So how, 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 um, how much has Western Center changed, you think, in the last two years? Uh, it's my first executive chef position. Mm -hmm. um, and I've made, I made all my mistakes my first year. Mm -hmm. And now this year it's, it's, it's turning around. Um, it's a great opportunity just to be creative. Yeah. Um, they they kind of let me do whatever I kind of want, you know, mm -hmm. just as long as it doesn't, interrupt our business more right. or less. I, I get to be creative. Every month I have a, a wine tasting that I do. Nice. We, yes. we, we pair up wine, mm -hmm. uh, wine with food. I'll have to attend one. Yes, yeah. most definitely. Yeah, you probably have one in January, correct? January, yeah. Okay. Uh, you guys just had a really successful pr uh, event that just went, just happened up there, didn't you? Uh, yeah. What was it, the holiday? The Santa brunch. The Santa brunch, yeah. we yeah. have Santa Claus come in, uh, and then all the, the kids get to make gingerbread houses. And nice. He comes in on a fire truck. And then oh, we open up at the doors, and all the kids run to the front of the, oh. the, the restaurant. It's actually really, it's it's really fun for everybody. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, the kids get it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, and um, yeah, everybody has food and and gets photos, and then they get to oh, they take it with them. We post it on the internet, and everybody yeah, can get it. Oh, parents yeah. must love that. <laughs> um, what I like about West, on, I mean, I've been in, I live, I've been in West Roxbury since I was born. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when it used to be, as Joe can remember, it was Buck Mulligans, and a lot of us went there late night. We're talking late night, like <laughs> two o'clock, and then we had the DJ on and everything. So when they closed and did it over, I mean, it's definitely such a plus for West Roxbury. And again, what I like to like about it is it's like a nice open kitchen. As you know, I like to sit mm -hmm. at the head, the chef's table, I like to look and see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, I also like the bar area, but I don't want to call it a bar area because it's very classily done and it's nicely decorated. I noticed that you put more, um, you put a banquet. The banquet in the back? Yeah, banquet. Yeah, back at. I can't even pronounce the word. Um, <laughs> you, everyone knows what I mean. Um, you know, decorated nice, yeah. but you still have the fireplace. And yeah. um, I went there, as you know, last Saturday, and Joe Murphy and I, we sat at the bar, and it was, it was like early, like, we'll say early part specials, but not that, but it's that time, quarter to six. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You know, so, okay, so, but it was nice because the bar was packed, yeah. you know what I mean? And play nice Christmas music, and even around the surrounding areas. So, I mean, it's definitely a plus for West Roxbury to have yeah. West on Center. It's real cozy. Oh, we it's get so the cozy, lights on. Yeah. yeah. And then nice drink menu. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mine's ruby red's my favorite. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that we were talking earlier about the Main Street program, and I, I know that Joe has some experience with them too, you mm -hmm. know, is that they really get involved in, in the businesses and the communities and really try and bring, yeah. you know, help you out and get, help, help, like I said, with some of the demographic information right. and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I remember Buck Milligan's too. Don't I, don't I, Joe? <laughs> Did you go? <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> but uh, it, it, 
what's it like when, when you're in behind behind the uh, in the back of the house? We'll mm -hmm. call it right. And you, and you look out, and there's a Carol O'Connor sitting there at the chef's table. I mean, does does everybody <laughs> kind of <laughs> scatter around? Oh, you're the critic. The table <laughs> critic is here. You know. <laughs> I didn't know what he was getting at. <laughs> Tabletop critic. I didn't know you meant table there. critic. <laughs> Last time you were on, you were with, uh, what's his name again? Joe, Joe Murphy. Yeah, Joe the Murphy, first yeah. time. Yeah, first time we, I met you. Yeah. We're at the end of the um, chef's table. Yeah. That was yeah. the first time I'd met you, I yeah. believe. And then uh, she poked in the other day. She was saying on Saturday, and I was real busy. She's like, are you going to be on the show? I yeah, like, I poked in. No, I'm sorry yeah. I didn't call you. I've been really busy. And my hair was straight. <laughs> and I'm like, I hope he recognizes me. So a lot of people don't recognize me, you know, the big curly hair. Yeah. And I'm like, Max, I know you're busy, but you're going to be on the show because I'm getting nervous because I haven't heard back. I'm really bad at returning phone calls, <laughs> That's honestly. okay. I have your sound number now, so if I need you again, Look I out. will call. <laughs> <laughs> it's only just begun. <laughs> but um, like going on with Glenn was saying, what I liked to, like about Western Center, it's, it's just not a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You also have the, the Santa Claus brunch. You have the wine tastings. Yep. You always have something different, and I think that's good because you want to not only keep people coming, um, but also attract new foodies, new peoples oh, into the definitely. restaurant. Yeah. You know, our base of our, our clientele are all regulars. Yes. I mean, we have people in there every week. Yeah, yeah. Know, that's a good sign. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we, they're all friends with the staff. We, yeah. I know most of them. And, but since I've been working there, though, the demographic has, you know, we, we, we get new people in all the time, especially now, like the past yeah. couple of months. You, you look in the lounge and I don't, I don't recognize yeah. anybody, which is strange. Yeah. You know, it's, well, Janice it's and I have eaten there half a dozen times. Curtis Henderson and I, who's the general manager here, oh, right. have stopped in there for, for lunch. And, and, you know, it's a great restaurant. It's mm -hmm. great. You, you guys have done such, such a great job. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the Greens should really be proud of the work that's gotten into there because it really has become a destination in, in, yeah. in, in, in West Roxbury. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, the location is perfect. You're right at the corner of Belgrade and Center. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, come on. You know, that's a great spot. Yeah. And, uh, and then the food matches the location, yeah. which is, which yeah, is really, exactly. really nice, yeah. you know? Yeah, good point. We actually, um, we're actually going to be expanding in a couple months. Uh, yeah, underneath. Is this open news or is it secret? I you think it's... Well, it's open now, yeah. I guess. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> oh, great. I'm only kidding. In a couple months... We're <laughs> no one watches this show. No <laughs> Negativity <laughs> has got to stop. Continue. Uh, we're going to have a banquet room downstairs. We have a, um, nice. like, it's about three garage lengths. Yeah. So we're probably going to have about 50 to 60 new seats downstairs. That's, a, that's good. Private, that's a good private dining. High functions. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be really nice. I'm going to actually get awesome. a little bit more kitchen, too, which will be nice for oh, me. Oh, good. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. It's awesome. That's you, good you news. You brought some food in. I did. You did? Yeah. Well, do you think if we take a break, we can give, uh, get you over there, sure. show us some of Most the... definitely. Yeah, I'll give him the microphone. Ooh. <laughs> Crooning is up. <laughs> is required. <laughs> Listen, gang, hang in there. We're going to take another short break so we can get uh, uh, Chef Max Peterson over to, the, uh, over to his wares. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Right, Carol? Right, right, Max? Okay. Oh, yeah. Listen, gang, don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs>
nights making me feel paranoid I look outside and see the world at war The people off to work like they're alone I sit in silence staring at the fog It helps me breathe And it helps me see I cover up my eyes to block the light Well, welcome back, gang. Here we are, back here. Oh, there we are. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Glenn and Carol back here on the set, and We've got Max across the studio. This is one of the cool things about having a new, brand new, big mm -hmm. studio, is we're gonna be able to do all of these really neat, cool Back things. And forth, yeah. yeah. So, um, hi, Max. Hi. How you, you over there? Good. <laughs> how are you? Uh, what's, uh, what's the first piece we got to look at here, Max? What do you got for us? Um, today, I actually have our, our chicken lollipops. Um, but they are a chicken wing that we, uh, we French, where we expose the bone, and then um, uh -huh. we serve it with a blue cheese dressing. Okay. Um, we're gonna take a little break. Yeah. No, 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 no. We are. We're gonna take a break. Oh, we're, sorry, yeah. folks. We're gonna have to take a we're small quick. break because the food's just overwhelming us. <laughs> we have to take a <laughs> we bite. Can't, we can't stand this. <laughs> Listen, we'll be back in just one second, okay? I think we're having a problem with the mic. That's okay. Not to worry about it. But we'll be back in just a couple of seconds with Max. Don't go away, Max, because we'll be right back, okay? All right, thanks. So no one in. back again after a, a, a short break you know that's one of the you know we're still shaking the you know trying to this a new building mm -hmm. so so we're still trying to make sure things that, believe me the staff here is doing a fabulous job they, they, re they really really Excellent. are and uh, we're very proud of them but I'm hungry half the food's gone now. right well now we're gonna talk to Max who's gonna explain again about we'll be able to hear Max this time okay great you over there Max there you are okay <laughs> 
Uh, mm. Start again, Max. What All were we right. looking at? We were looking at the, the chicken there. Chicken yeah, lollipops. Um, we call these the, uh, the chicken lollipops. Um, one, one of the reasons is because they actually do look like a lollipop. Uh, mm -hmm. We expose, we French the, the, the wing, um, so it exposes the bone. Um, and also, it, it's a lot easier to eat. Um, there's no connective tissue, which is kind of gross to talk about. <laughs> oh, there they are. Oh, they look excellent. Oh, yeah. once, you, once you, you can literally just put the whole thing in your mouth and just and pull the bone out and, and eat the whole thing. The only um, way to eat chicken. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, we serve it with um, a little crudite, uh, blue cheese dressing, and uh, we toss it in a buffalo sauce. Uh, the secret is the, the red hot. It Unbelievable. It comes out of a can, but it's really good. Excellent. Um, and then uh, in the middle here, we, this is a, a double cut pork chop. Just for you, Glenn. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We serve it with uh, roasted uh, sweet potatoes, a blue cheese fondue, and, oh. uh, which is, do you like blue cheese? Oh. All right. He lives on it. <laughs> <laughs> he dips everything in it, even his eggs. And then we also have, uh, we serve it with a, a seasonal vegetable and is the season for uh, asparagus. Yes. Uh, these double cut pork chops uh, actually brine them in a little bit of salt and sugar for about 24 hours. Wow. Um, those are the, yeah, it keeps it nice and moist. You Finish it off in the oven. And then um, the third dish is, um, this is a cedar plank smoked salmon. Oh, my favorite. Um, I literally put the, the piece of fish on a piece of wood or of the, the cedar plank mm -hmm. and throw it in the oven. and. Uh, just the natural cooking method, it actually smokes, gradually smokes the outside. So oh it has a, a little bit of bitter flavor on the outside, but you also get the little, the little bit of the What's cedar. What's the sauce there I see on the base there? That's a uh, blackberry beurre blanc sauce. Ooh. Oh. Um, actually, I, I, that, that sauce I actually got from uh, my chef in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, in Seattle, they call them uh, Marion berries. It's pretty much a blackberry, but uh, yeah, that, that was one of his, oh. uh, his sauces Festive. that I used. Is that why they call it a Marion berry? <laughs> <laughs> Delish. <laughs> Yummy. Take the salmon, you dip it in. And then um, it's, it's served with a long grain rice, uh, wild rice mix, and uh, wilted spinach. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That's good. Chef, I like that, that was good. That was, that was great. Yeah. Chef, thank you very no much for being with us. Yeah, I thank really, you, Max. I really do appreciate it, Max. Yeah, and nice uh, to meet you both, actually. Come back again, you know? Yeah. And Stop by the restaurant, please. I will. I'd love to. Yeah, Janice, we'll go, Janice and I love we'll to. We'll attend the wine. Sure. That'd well, be me, great. Janice, and I will. We'll that'll keep, be great. keep you at home. But, um, well, folks, you know. we've still got plenty of show left because what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, take another short break mm -hmm. and we're going to be saying goodnight to you. Yes, I'm going to a um, birthday party party. Really? <laughs> yes. What's the difference between? It's like dinner. It's like, not like the cake, it's the dinner and the cake. So that'll Good. be fun. Well. But, um, but I'll see you. I'll yes. come over to your house for Christmas Eve. Yes, you are coming for Christmas yes. Eve. You and Joe. That'll be great. Yep. And then we'll see you. Uh, we'll be back January 7th. January 7th. Yeah, and yeah. you'll come back with Jesse. Yes, it'll be, be great. Yeah. Next. Right. Yeah. We got this full of museum. Is, we just mm -hmm. love it. And it's going to be lots of fun talking about it. Listen, gang, we'll be back in just a couple of seconds. Don't go away, okay? We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm weary all the time. The time So weary All the time When he went away The blues walked in and met me If he stays away Old rocking chair will get me all I do is pray The Lord above will let me Walk in the sun once more Can't go on Everything I had is gone Stormy weather Since my man and I ain't together Keeps raining all the time Keeps raining all the time When he went away The blues walked in and met me if he stays away, old rocking chair will get me. All I do is.
is prayer the Lord above will let me walk in the sun once more can't go on everything I had is gone stormy weather since my man and I ain't together keeps raining all the time keeps raining Well, hey, gang, how you doing? Glenn back here. How are you? That was a sneak peek right there <laughs> of my next guest, and it's really a great pleasure and, and an honor to, to introduce everybody to uh, uh, Jesse Slosher. Slosser. Schlosser. Schlosser. Yep. I had it right the first Very time. Very nice Jessie, to meet you. how are you? Welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for having me. How's everything? You find us okay? You live right down the street. Yeah, you know I live down the are. street. It was, it was great. You are the exhibitions manager at the Full Craft Museum. I am. I great. Am. How long have you held that position? Well, I've been at the museum for about three years. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a, it's a really fun place to work. It's so. a great, great location. You've got a beautiful place there. And the museum, it went through a change not too long ago. Yes. There was some, yep. you know, Back in 2004, we yeah. made the shift to craft. So yeah. that was a huge, huge shift. And, um, you know, we had been a small regional arts museum. Yeah. Um, been doing some really great things there as Fuller Museum of Art. Um, but then in 2004, the um, board of directors and our um, fearless leader, Gretchen Keyworth, yes, who you know, Gretchen. Um, decided to make the change um, to contemporary craft. Yeah. So ever since um, we've made that change, things have really been on the up and up. Well, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal place. Like I said, super producer Janice and I love yeah. to go there. And one of, the th one of the things that I think that you're really helping out, or not helping out, but spearheading because I know I, I know Gretchen's doing this because of her work with, with crafts at the castle and yeah stuff. people think of crafts as you know glue and right, you know kitschy. Yeah, yeah you know but you know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about uh, but crafts are a, a fine art there there are some crafts that there are lots of crafts that are beautiful pieces of, of art that are, that are done locally that are done Domestically and yeah. internationally, exactly. You know, yeah. and uh, and you have brought the mu a great museum to a greater level yeah. because now what you're doing is you're concentrating on, on some of the great crafters of our community, your contemporary craft. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. we're actually one of seven craft museums in the country, That's great. so we've sort of carved out this this niche, um, which has been fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you should be very proud. Um, you're a membership museum. How, we are. How do people become members and what does that kind of get you? Well, that's a great question. Um, membership is really the backbone of the museum. Mm. Um, and it's also really fun. We just started a new uh, contemporary studio membership. We have all sorts of different levels of membership, but one of the new programs is for um, young professionals in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who are interested in learning, of course, about contemporary craft and seeing what we're up to at Fuller Craft Museum, but also as a sort of social networking uh -huh. um, opportunity, and it's really fun, you know, get together, see the shows that are up, and then also have a glass of wine, mm -hmm. meet some people, um, and we've worked out all, all these great partnerships with organizations and um, restaurants, and, mm -hmm. and it's been a, a really fun 
um, new program for us. So. Well, the museum, the museum itself definitely does cater to the to being able to a, a schmoozing atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. You know, there there is there is room for that. You know, Certainly. there's the, you've got a beautiful campus. Yes. I mean, we've got to show this. Yes. got to show a couple of these pictures. Yeah, we're, if I can. We're located uh, on 22 acres of parkland. You can see that. You can see that right there, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Yep. So you can see this is Upper Porter's Pond, um, which is a gorgeous. This is an Olmsted designed. Um, string of parks, yeah. which is beautiful, like yeah. the um, emerald necklace, right. same right. designer, so um, it's a gorgeous location. Yeah, one of the things that I found fascinating is when you go down and kind of through the restaurant, you can go through yeah. and out outside and to get to the second yes. part there, and it's beautiful, you go, wow, yeah. you know, because the atmosphere in, in the surroundings just is so Exactly, exactly, so it's, it's fun. I. Um, Near my desk, I look out, um, look out to the right, and there are swans and oh geese and ducks. And um, every every year, we watch little um, turtles oh, yeah. hatch and then crawl oh, out. Oh, that must it's be great! It's really wonderful. Now, I understand you also have programming. We have all sorts of things you, going on. You have on. programs for, for all, all yeah. the just stuff for kids The kids can come yep, in now? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of We've thing? got um, classes and workshops that are sort of going on all the time. And so um, to throw the website out there, um, Please. it's um, www.fullercraft.org. So um, there's listings of all of our workshops and classes uh -huh. and programs um, for all age ranges, for kids, for families, for um, adults. We've got a huge mm. range of things going Great. on. We've also got family, our family day, which is um, sensation day. So we just had a really successful one. Um, we bring in music and theater groups and all sorts of, of art activities. Yeah, and yeah. They've been a blast. Are you, are you an artist as well? Um, I have, have done a lot of uh, ceramics. You have? Yeah, so that's sort of my, um, my craft background. Well, being the exhibits manager, do you have a little corner that you kind of... <laughs> little studio little space. Little studio space for <laughs> That'd you. That'd be nice. <laughs> Put up a couple of your pieces. I, I, I ask everybody that question. <laughs> they all give me the same reaction. What are you, crazy? <laughs> no, I don't, but, um, you know, being... Every day I walk, you know, walking through the museum and also getting ready for all the shows. We're doing 18 to 20 shows a wow. year, which is... Um, that is ambitious. Which is intense, yeah. and it's great. Um, and we have so many fascinating artists come who's, through Who's hanging around year. there now? Who um, can I see? Well, actually, three shows um, that are closing January 6th, so you have sort of a last chance to go see them. Um, a show called Pulp Function, which is curated by a man named Lloyd Harmon. He's the founding director of the Smithsonian's Renwick Gallery. So he's this very, very well-known. He has his chops. Yeah. Wonderful, <laughs> down-to-earth, sweetheart of a guy, um, and also a brilliant curator. Um, curated a show of paper art for us. So it's all artwork made out of paper in all sorts of different um, well, manifestations. Jess, Jess would love that. Yeah, yes. there's a... Um, beautiful wedding dress that's made out of paper towels. Wow. Um, it's gorgeous, you know, sort of um, beautiful. It's a, it's a gorgeous um, piece. And then her companion piece to it, so there's this beautiful wedding dress, and then there's a sort of Chanel-looking suit dress, and it's all made out of diapers. <laughs> so it's about sort of the bride and the mother. Yeah. So, um, oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, so that's Pulp Function. And then there's also a clay show called Fire and Ash, and then a studio furniture show, which is called New Now. And it's all emerging studio furniture artists, so nice. young artists just sort of out of grad school. Nice. Great. As, as the exhibits manager, um, one of the things that we're lucky to have here at BNN is we have a lot of students that, that yeah. watch, watch the show because of our location. We just, it's so beautiful. We're so lucky to be right in the heart of Boston. Oh, here. absolutely. You know, but look, to become an exhibits manager, you have to have worked awful hard at, at understanding pieces, knowing, knowing the communication, how to deal with artists. Yeah. How do you, how, where did you study that kind of work? That's is a it, is great it, question, is it, yeah. is it something that you just, like Max, our great chef, just worked his way to, to knowing this kind of great... Yeah, well, you know, I, um, 
I went to college in New Hampshire and studied English and art. Mm -hmm. So I was an English major and a studio art minor, um, which was actually wonderful because um, I have, you know, those writing skills yeah. and um, some communication skills um, from the English major. And then I also did tons of studio art when I was in school. You did, okay. So that was, so, yeah. that was a great foundation for me. Then I, um, after I graduated, I had no idea what I was going to do. Sounds familiar. And um, so I, took an internship at the Society of Arts and Crafts. Oh, on Newbury Street. On Newbury Street. Yeah, great. And worked great. with Beth Ann Gerstein there, yeah. you know, um, at, in, an, in a summer intern, as a summer intern. Um, and I loved it. I loved the work. I loved working with contemporary craft. Um, and so I just really sort of aggressively pursued mm, mm. working in the arts. Mm. Um, I took a year and worked at a um, PR firm, which was helpful, um, certainly. And then... Um, well, there must be a lot of reach uh, outreach for, for the position. Yes, you're in. You yeah. Know, so you, you've got to be able to, to get that, the message across. Absolutely, you know? yeah. So, so an internship, is, it's, a, it's a strong way for, for oh, some of our, our students. absolutely. Hands-on. Yeah, because that's one of the programs that we have here. We have students from Northeastern or Emerson or, or oh, BU yeah. or something that, that come over that are in in media, taking media sure. courses, and they come and actually run the studio. That's fantastic. You know, so so that's one of the way you know that that internship. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's the way to um, meet people yeah. and get your your hands in a project. Right. And and, and it doesn't only work that one way. You could have also gone to the society and said. I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> right. You know, right. so it's Gives a good a way. Taste. Yeah, it's a good way. What else yeah. is coming up? What's coming up in the spring uh, at the at the re at the restaurant yeah. <laughs> at the museum? Can't well, get that food out of my mind. <laughs> um, I know it smells really good. Um, we have we're gearing up for three new shows. Um, one is a Jamie Bennett exhibition. So Jamie Bennett is an enameler. Um, mm -hmm. So he is making jewelry, and um, so we're doing a retrospective of his work. Um, and so that opens in um, opens in January, nice. um, which will be fantastic. And then he also has paintings and sketchbooks and um, and scu small sculptures that will be showing his work. Also. Um, William Hunter, who's a turned wood artist. So he started doing this sort of um, turned, traditional turned, turned wood. wood. So you know where it's on a lathe oh, and yeah, um, they kind of dig into carved the out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he yeah. started off doing this um, fairly traditional turned wood and then took it to the next level, just um, starting ma making sculpture. Yeah, wood is beautiful. Uh, gorgeous. Oh, and they so, can some great stuff. Um, so those are two shows. And then also, speaking of Society of Arts and Crafts, we're collaborating with them on an exhibition. Nice. So um, they have an artist award program. Um, so we're going to show some artwork um, from artists who have won those artist awards. Great. In, in a, one of our you know, whenever we mention the Society of Arts and Crafts, I always have to say, because I've had people go, you're kidding. Go upstairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they go, what is it upstairs? Go upstairs. Yeah, good Just point. Make yeah. sure you go upstairs. Yeah. Because that's where that's where you actually see some of the of the great exhibit work. Yeah. And I'm sure that you've you've seen some incredible things there. Yes. As as well as moving over, over to where, where you are now. I mean Absolutely. Now, do you get to curate it all? Do you do you get to, to hang as well? Yeah. How's you that know, experience for you? It's great. Um, I'm lucky to work with sort of the structure of the museum is mm. Gretchen is our director and she's also our chief curator. Yeah. Um, so then working very closely with Gretchen is a fabulous exhibitions committee. So we've got this group of, you know, 10 to 12 amazing, um, amazing people. You know, they are independent curators, designers, um, people from all sorts of different backgrounds. Yeah, and yeah. so they, we get together once a month and brainstorm about ideas, and they're Great. doing a lot of the hands-on curating. Great. Um, I'm doing a little bit, you know, sort of here and there, but my role is really managing all the, all the crazy moving parts, so. Um, which there are many. Which there are many. Doing 18 to 20 shows a year um, is a blast. Keeps me on my toes. Are you doing three at a time? Yeah. Is well, that a kind of a pattern thing? They turn over. Um, yeah, how long do they hang? About four months. Well, yeah, okay, that's not so, bad. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's great. Now, do you guys do the outreach for the for the for the um, crafters who'll be coming in 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 the future, or do you get requests? Do people come to you? Oh yeah, do you, you know, does it happen in many it different? It comes ways? in tons of different ways. Mm. Exactly. Um, you know, sometimes we'll have an eye on an artist, um, and we'll approach them and say, "Hey, would you consider doing a show with us, mm -hmm. um, working with us on an exhibition?" Mm -hmm. And um, other times we'll work with galleries. You know, there's somebody. Uh, Galleries that we know, and they'll come to us and say, "Hey, would you ever consider showing yeah. this person's work?" Um, individual artists will come up and um, put together a proposal for us, send it in. So there is that opportunity as well. There is. It's uh -huh. limited. You know, we're yeah, scheduling yeah. into 2010. Um, you are. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. And there are only so many spaces, but but there's always. Oh, by then you're going to be spread out know, all over I the know. place. Are you kidding? Yeah. It'll be annexes yeah. left and right. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a reception ever for an opening or a closing? So yeah. you know, get an opportunity to meet the artist. Absolutely. And um, January twenty seventh, actually. Um, we're going to have an opening reception for these big three shows nice. that are opening up, the Jamie Bennett, Bill Hunter, and SAC. So those are usually on a Sunday afternoon, um, and they're, they're a blast. You know, yeah. ha come, have a bite to eat, a yeah. glass of wine, and the artists are often there, which is great, so yeah. you'll have the opportunity to meet them. The reason I bring that up is because that's often when Janice and I go, is yeah. for, the, for the receptions, you know, because yeah. that's... That's they're the fun. time, you they're know. Really that's fun. that's so because you, you you first of all you you're with people that are so into the arts and they're there oh, for absolutely. they're there because of, because of the atmosphere and it's just always a nice fun feeling to be around people oh, people yeah. like that you know oh yeah you know we talked about crafts at the castle I'm sure walking through crafts at the castle you must be picking up you know <laughs> business cards here and there right. you know right yeah picking up the, of 2011 of course right know? right <laughs> yes yes. Yeah. Um, well, it's been, you know, let me tell you, it's been a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you sure. get to show your work anyplace else? Does anybody have mm -hmm. an opportunity to see what, what kind of work did you well, say? Well, pottery, your pottery, but, you know, really just for fun. That's, you know. Do you I'm, have a mug you made on your desk? That yes, you I your do, coffee actually. At? I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been mainly focusing on Christmas presents. Oh, that's um, so making work for my friends and family. Well, that's fabulous. So yeah, yeah. Jesse, thank you very, very much for coming in. Thank I really you do so appreciate much. it. This is Let's fun. take this final opportunity to let people know exactly where the Fuller is. Yes, well, we are in Brockton, so um, 24 South. Um, for directions, you can go to our website, which is fullercraft.org. And um, we're just a minute away from Ikea. So yeah. if you're heading down there, <laughs> come and visit us. You know, Ikea should be saying, we're just a minute away from the Fuller Museum. I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you so much. It was much. a pleasure having you. Will you say good night with me? We have to sure. Time to say good night. Listen, yeah. gang, thank you very much for being here with us. I guess we're going to be off for a little bit now, right? No shows for the next couple of weeks, I think, because we're going to be going through the holidays and whatnot. Mm. So listen, gang, uh, enjoy everything. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe and happy out there. Get out there and do something artful for yourself, okay? Uh, and as we like to say every week, please, keep in the forefront of your mind while you're doing something artful. Uh, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil, please. Mm. Whatever you do actually do it for them, and uh, have a great holiday, and we'll see you soon, okay? Bye now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much.